It was the world's first mass market electric car, affordable, practical and innovative in equal measure. It also wasn't particularly exciting beyond that and it didn't seem like the basis for one of the wildest touring car races ever built. But this is the story of the Nissan LEAF Nismo RC. Nissan wanted to promote its new mass market electric car and its slightly warmed up Nismo branded version. The Nissan LEAF was not the obvious choice to make a racing car out of, but Nissan did do the logical thing and built a full carbon fibre chassis Super GT GT300 style version of the Nissan Leaf, because why not? And I bet you thought that the concept of a Toyota Prius GT300 was wild enough. This is a car that was in reality at least manufactured by Dome, which was also responsible for the original Honda NSX GT500. It had built its own Formula One car and various other projects, including the gorgeous S102 Le Mans prototype. Aside from promoting the new Leaf electric car, the Nismo RC as it was known, RC for racing concept, was vaguely destined for a one make racing championship which never actually happened. In fact I'm not sure that one make racing championship was ever really a serious proposal. Nismo and Dome essentially built up this car because they sort of wanted to. The mechanical package of the car was pure motorsport engineering. It was a carbon fibre monocoque mated to a conventional roll cage with tubular sections front and rear to carry the suspension loads and also mount the battery. With the bodywork removed you can really see that this truly was a pure silhouette racer. It almost reminds me of some of those Pikes Peak specials. The suspension was a double wishbone layout all round with pushrod actuated spring and damper units. Here you can see the substantial front crash box. With the front crash box removed you get a good look at the front suspension layout. The bodywork and shape of the car was distinctly different though from the production Leaf. The three-piece carbon fibre bodywork was pure GT300. It was much wider than the production car and notably it was a lot longer. The car was also significantly lower as you might expect with this being a racing car. There was a not insubstantial diffuser, front splitter and flat floor as well as that large rear wing. Overall the racing concept version of the Leaf weighed a lot less than the production car, 925 kilograms compared to 1520 kilograms for the production car version. Even though the car was longer than the standard production car, it actually had a shorter wheelbase. Looking at the bodywork, I think only the badges, headlights and tail light lenses came from the standard production car and pretty much that's about it. The powertrain though did largely come from the production Nissan Leaf, albeit thoroughly rearranged with the battery pack sat in the midship position hidden in that big carbon fibre box. And the AC synchronous motor from the production car was also used to drive the rear wheel. Wheels. There was no conventional transmission at all. And as you can see here, the motor setup truly did come from the production car. Note the tubular steel rear chassis in this shot as well. In theory, this production based motor produced just 80 kilowatts, and that's what Nissan's official literature claimed about the car. But I think in reality, it was notably more. This is because the entire electronic package on the car had been completely reworked, and there was a driver adjustable map setting included with differing power levels available. On the most extreme level, the car would easily light up its rear wheels and launch extremely quickly. On its competition debut at the Crystal Palace circuit in London in England in 2012, it beat off a whole host of cars including a BMW M3, an Impreza WRX, an RX-7 FD3, even a BMW Z4M and a Nissan 370Z. So it doesn't seem likely that that would have been possible with just 80 kilowatts, even though the car was much lighter and lower than the original version. On top of that, at that event, the driver of the Leaf had been told not to drive flat out as the car had to be driven in Monaco the next day by Prince Albert. After that first event, proper competition appearances by the Leaf RC were somewhat sporadic. There was some drifting in Japan and some hill climbing in New Zealand, but it did eventually enter at least two races in Japan, with the first race coming at Sportsland Suga in 2012. Sugio Matsuda, the GT500 driver, was at the wheel and it was a round of the quite wonderful All Japan EV GP series, which to my 
my eye, it looks like a real world version of some of the odd races you get in the early stages of the Gran Turismo games. The Leaf started on pole but actually finished second to a Tesla Roadster. Nissan weren't quite done with that championship and Daiki Sasaki took over the car for the next race and he won it. This whole EV GP series actually looks really wild and we will have to cover it at some point and yes it is still a thing. Nismo was actually willing to sell the Leaf RC cars to privateers as long as they approved of the individuals purchasing them. Though the purchase price was at least 500,000 US dollars so I'm not sure that any were ever actually sold but I do believe about 10 cars were built. Nissan later built a much more potent version of the car based on the second generation Leaf and I mean based on in the loosest sense. Again it had a full carbon fiber chassis, a mid engine layout if you can call it that and it was a lot more powerful. I'm not sure if any of these second generation Leaf Nismo RC cars though ever ran in competition. The original Leaf Nismo RC was quite an important car. I think at least in part it gave Dome the idea of building up a common monocoque chassis which manufacturers or private tuners could easily and cost effectively build up into a high performance car to meet their needs. A sort of mother chassis. But that is another story and one we will tell soon. Imagine if other car makers had followed Nissan and developed their own cars around this concept. Then a stunningly brilliant electric touring car series would have been the result. While I know Formula E has its fans, surely the world needs a properly wild electric touring car series with cars like the Leaf RC in it. I, I know that I want to see that at least. I mean if it followed the mother chassis route, a Renault Zoe RC would have been an obvious obvious choice or the Chevy Bolt. And there's lots of other examples. Maybe it would have finally opened up the world of the electric hot hatch properly, at least in terms of racing. Sadly, uh, recently I was surprised and really quite disappointed to see that the third generation Leaf design is just another SUV styled electric car. Why are cars getting bigger for no good reason? On that disappointing note, if you've enjoyed this compact electrifying silhouette of a video, then don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon somewhere in the pit lane.